Coleman, a star of the Dunnage Horror. A suspense play produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Come in, Dunnage, Massachusetts. Come in, Dunnage. Good evening. This is Henry Armitage. I'm speaking to you... Uh, Dr. Wright, please close the window. I'm speaking to you from my laboratory on the slopes of Sentinel Hill near Dunnage, Massachusetts. Present with me is Dr. Warren Wright, my distinguished colleague from Miskatonic University. Uh, We are now about 100 yards from the summit of the hill, which is crowned by a huge table-like stone set in the center of a circle of stone pillars, a place of prehistoric worship. A moment ago, uh, you may have heard the dogs of Tunnage Township barking, as we have heard them for three days and three nights. Dr. Rice and I know the horror which their barking portends, but the purpose of this broadcast is to make this unbelievable horror believable to you. I hope for your sakes and ours we are successful tonight. It is the eve of all hallows. Tomorrow will be too late. Our time tonight is very short, so so I'll speak only of those more recent events which, believe me, may culminate at any moment in a climax too frightful to wholly contemplate. I will begin with the birth of Wilbur Whateley. It was the night of February the 2nd, 1921. Candlemas. Toward dawn, when Lavinia Whateley, a deformed albino woman about 35 years old, gave birth to her dark, goatish-looking son in the crumbling Whateley farmhouse northeast of the village. No one attended her. No doctor or midwife. No one was with her, except her aged, half-insane father, who was known as Wizard Whateley. So Wilbur came into this world under heaven knows what incantations, what appeals to what power. A week later... Wizard Waitley drove his sleigh into Dunnage Village and reported the event to a group of loungers in Osborne's general store. Hey, hey your grandson got yeah. yellow hair like Lavinia Wizard? No, pigs after his father more. He's dark, dark. You never spoke of who his father might be now, did you? Oh, you know his father when the time comes. Oh, Lavinia's read and seen some things the most of you only talk about. Uh, calculate her husband's as good as you can find this side of Aylesbury. Well, we don't be nosy, will you? Uh, maybe it wasn't no church that none of you heard of. But you wouldn't ask no better church wedding than Lavinia's. Why well, didn't he tell no wedding, wizard? Hmm. When was that? Oh, not a wedding you'd hear of, Corey. Not a husband you'd hear of, neither. But let me tell you something. Someday you folks will hear a child of Lavinia's calling its father's name on top of Sentinel Hill. <laughs> Prophecy? Or idle boasting by an insane old man? Now, I know I ask a great deal when I ask you to believe that the arrival of an infant into that house of dire poverty and squalor could possibly constitute a horror and a threat to all our known world. Yet it has an earthly history. Perhaps through this history, you will be able to give it credence. Wilbur Waitley's growth was uncanny. But even if he had been an average child, he would have become, in time, an unnatural being, for he was surrounded from the first by the most malign influence. There was his grandfather, old Waitley, Wizard Waitley, who each Halloween climbed Sentinel Hill to the great circle of stone, and while the hills shook, stood holding a great book open on his arm and shrieked into the wind. Shriek! Oh, Yag Sothoth. Yag That dreadful name, first mentioned in the hideous forbidden book, the Necronomicon. And this wizard Waitley was Wilbur's teacher. The villagers began to notice curious things that were going on at the Waitley farmhouse. Soon after Wilbur was born, old Waitley began to remodel the house. 
The abandoned upper story was restored, and all the windows were tightly boarded up. And then, a wizard began to buy cattle in large numbers, both horses and cows. Yet the livestock on the farm didn't seem to increase. Young Lem Brown was one day, curious enough to creep close to the house to count the weightly herd. Dr. Armitage, there weren't more than 12 cows, and them six looked like they had the blight and funny wounds on them, like cuts. I heard something, too, in the top part of Wizard's house, something like water slapping inside, only big, big like a sea. <laughs> One other person went to the Waitley farm in the years before I met Wilbur, Dr. Ken Houghton of Aylesbury, who was called by Wilbur himself, who said that his grandfather was dying. Dr. Houghton found the old man in the bedroom on the ground floor, and Wilbur with him. While outside the window, a legion of Whippoorwill cried loudly and rhythmically, endlessly. Wilbur spoke about the sound. Whistle in time with his breathing now. They're ready. Listen, Doctor. They know his soul's going out. They're waiting. <laughs> yes, well, but that's an interesting superstition. Late in the air for them, too. When he goes, if they catch him, they'll keep laughing till break of day. If they don't catch him, they'll quiet down. You mean you believe it? In just a minute. I think he's conscious. Yes, the birds changed when his breathing changed. Like Willie, I say. Willie, Willie. I'm here. More space, Willie. Remember, more space soon. Yes, I'll build it. You grows, but that grows faster. It'll be ready to serve you soon, Willie. I know. But remember... When it's time, you open up the gates to yog Sothoth with a long chant. The one on page 7 and 51 of the book. But mind you, feed it enough. Because if it gets out before you open to yog Sothoth, it's all over. It's no use. He's going now. He's dead, Will Bless him. <laughs> the birds, they didn't get him. Yes, he's free. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs>